Hello again, everybody. It's Harry Boxer, the technical trader at thetechtrader.com. It is Tuesday, the 15th of September. These are the charts of the day. Damn good day on Wall Street today. Markets rallied all day. Only the last hour, they pulled back a little bit, but um, I like the way they closed. I like the way a lot of our stocks acted. Let's take a look at some old ones and some new ones. ACET, which we mentioned over the weekend, has had nice follow-through uh, inside day on Tuesday, on Monday, excuse me, and a nice pop follow-through day on Tuesday up near 30 at one point, close at 28.87, up 170, that's six, per, six and a quarter percent. Fine was a solid 455,000, which is a lot for that stock. If you take a look at the overall structure of the pattern on a two day basis, you'll see the stock's been an uptrend. Here's a weekly chart. Long uptrend from the um, four and a half, five lows, all the way up into the high 20s. Looking at the long term picture, these are all time highs. Um, recently, after popping in July all the way up to a high near the 20, Seven and a half range, it came down a three wave corrective pullback that tested the earlier breakout point there and then exploded off of that. I mean, from 21 and change to almost 30 in a week. Um, yes, it broke out of a key double top yesterday, and we may see a follow through. Looking at the longer term chart, you'll see mid channel line is right in here about the uh, 30, 30 and a half range. So we could see a little pullback consolidation, but I think that would be a setup. I think eventually. We're looking for mid-30s and even mid-40s down the road. This looks very good. Technicals and volume look good. Let's see where, what we get going forward. Swing trade ADSX acting great up four days in a row, six of the last seven. In particular, volume picking up three days in a row as well. Today it popped popped $1.64, 9.2% on almost $3 million. And um, with a high of 28.88, it did pull back late in the day on profit taking um, after reaching near resistance right in that zone. But I still think... The stock has more to go. My targets are now near 24 and then all the way up near 30 again. And if we get to that zone, we're looking at a big number down the road. But for now, after a one, two, three, and four wave move, looks like wave five is underway. Up next is uh, AXGN, which recently popped here for the beautiful wedge. Low volume ebb. Today was a breakout day. Look at that wedge. Exploded for 13.8 percent. That was a 68 cent gain. 1.16 million. That's the biggest volume we've seen since December, largest of this year. Looking at a two-day chart, you'll see that multiple up, highs up in that zone. Back in 2013, it did spike all the way up to six and a quarter. I suspect that with today's high at five and three quarters, we could get that stock up to that six and a quarter level short term, and that would be my certain test. If we can get through there, we may see a seven or eight dollar stock. <clears throat> EXL looks poised to pop. EXEL. Um, after coming down, forming a left shoulder head and a right shoulder, we have a bit of an inverse head and shoulders. We're right at the neckline today. Popped through the declining top line. We're right at the neckline. I suspect that the possibility exists that we may short term test the six and three quarters, seven and a quarter zone. That's my short term target. Secondary targets eight, eight and a quarter. Needs volume, but if it gets it, we could run in this one. GWPH with some strong drug news today as the stock exploded, uh, opening 1650, 116.52, jumping to nearly 121, pulling back uh, and selling in at 115 up 8, 10, or 7.5% of million sick traders. Significant part about today was that the declining top line, all the moving averages, all three of them, 10, 21, and 50, were taken out. It went up to the spike high. From August, where we reached 120.99, today's high 120.94, so nearly an exact double top, and it did pull back. Watch the 50 day moving average now, which comes in about 112.42, but that's support between 111 and 112 and a half. I suspect we may get some follow through, and if we do get to 121, look for the stock to run up to the 130, 35 zone for a retest of the old highs, and that would be quite interesting. Let's just say something up in this zone here. Up there. I tech. Well, I was looking for the breakout across the declining top line. We got that today. I wanted to see it through the prior high. We got that today. It closed above it too. I'm looking for a run at the prior high up around the 16, 40, 45 range next, right there. If we get through that, an old the old high up around just under 20, or is it at 20? 19.45. So looking for 16 and a half, and let's call it 19 and a half on this one. Not enough volume today to make me think it's going to have a definitive breakout, but let's see if we get a fall through tomorrow. I like Sarex. Also, the rising wedge broke through the, through the top today, but it did not break through the resistance zone. I'm going to need to follow through 
you get this above, say, 14, 30, 40, it gets above that, we may see as high as 17 in a stock. Quite interesting. And Maxwell, big day today, announcing a deal with the U.S. Uh, automotive company, I believe it was General Motors. Stock popped out of the falling wedge and exploded for 18% or on a million nine good volume. At this point, I'm looking for a test of six and three quarters, seven. We get through that, I'm looking for eight and a quarter and a half. PAYC broke out of the wedge today, popped dollar eighty four almost five percent. Volume picked up to the best in about four weeks. I'm looking for a retest of the recent highs up here around forty one and a half. That could have happen early tomorrow. We get through that. Look for mid channel number around forty five six. Eventually, fifty five sixty could be in in play. Sucampo. Coming out of a wedge itself, not a huge volume, but a million share trade was up nearly a point or three and three quarter percent. Let's see if we get a follow through. Right now, resistance on Sucampo, 27 and a half, and then the old high at 29 and a quarter. We get through that, looking at a potential mid 30s on Sucampo. Seattle Genetics, strong spike up from the 40 low to 48.83 high just in four sessions. We're at resistance here from this high at 49.08. We get through that, we're going to test the old. Multi-year highs at 52.33. I should actually see, is that all-time highs? Let's double-check that. Uh, not quite. Back in early 2014, we reached 55, 8, 50, almost 56. So the resistance is at about 52 and 56. Those are my targets. But I'd like to see a pullback retest consolidation and a hold of about 45 and a quarter. If you can set up a consolidation for a few days, you may get a run on this one. Sarepta, really, really nice pattern. Explosive move flag, pop, pull back and test, 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 but in a nice orderly rising channel. Today the top of the channel may be challenged at 39.40. In the next day or so we should see that. And then I'm looking for 46. TRBN with a big pop and wedge broke out yesterday. A bit of a follow through today, but a nice close above that the prior close. Only 28 cents, but still, if we can get follow through and take this above 12.35, we can see $14, $15 stock very quickly. And lastly is Weight Watchers which I believe turned the corner after breaking this trend line, and then after backing and filling in this range with a minor falling wedge here. Today, Pop broke out with a breakaway gap, trading 4.1 million up 14%. Now, if we get a follow through here, I'm looking for a move to eight and three quarters. Beyond that, about 10. And that's it for tonight, everybody. Have a good evening.